Hess's law can also be applied to uh, dissolving ionic salts. Of if you have an ionic compound in solid phase, if you dissolve it enough water to produce your cations in aqueous and anions in aqueous, this process is known as delta H solution at room temperature. And uh, usually we want to figure it out with other information. So what I can do is go after enthalpy of lattice, which we have those information, lattice enthalpy. And that's when you take your ionic salt and you produce cations in gaseous form plus anions in gaseous form. And then what we can do is dissolve this in water, enough water, and that's known as delta H hydration. Delta H hydration of cation. And then you also have the second quantity, which is delta H hydration of anion. Now, if you agree some of this two arrow, uh, let me just put it in different color, this red arrow, lattice enthalpy plus this hydration of the anions and cations is equal to delta H solution. So then you can simply calculate it, delta H solution of a salt, ionic salt, is simply equals to enthalpy of lattice, or lattice enthalpy, plus sum of delta H hydration of cation, plus delta H hydration of anion. A few other things. This this process we already decided is endo delta H enthalpy of lattice, and this process here is exo. When you dissolve gaseous ions into enough water, uh, delta H solution depends. It could be endo or exo, and that will be decided after calculations. Now let's apply it. There are some tables in your IB data booklet that comes handy. Uh, lattice enthalpy and definitely hydration. There is also a table 19 which is aqueous solutions. Usually you don't need to use it but you have it. Let's have an example of sodium chloride. So I go after sodium chloride which I see enthalpy of lattice is 790 endothermic positive. The hydration of sodium is negative 424 and hydration of chloride is negative 359. So have these three pieces of information handy and let's just apply it. So for sodium chloride, first I take the salts, dissolve it in water to produce sodium cation aqueous plus chloride anion aqueous delta H solution is question mark. Delta H lattice, lattice enthalpy, we just uh, decided it was 790, so 790, and you break it into gaseous ions, infinite distance away from each other. Then now let's just add these uh, ions into enough water to produce the aqueous solution. So you have delta H hydration of sodium, which was negative 424 plus delta H hydration of chloride, which was negative 359. Let's just add these quantities and calculate delta H solution. So these two arrows will equal the delta H solution. Delta H solution therefore is positive 790 plus two negative quantities and when you do that you will get about seven kilojoules per mole a tiny quantity and that's the indication why sodium chloride can easily be dissolved in water with not much fluctuation in temperature let's do another example this time i want to do kbr potassium bromide then again i go to your table 18 and look at potassium bromines uh, delta H lattice which is 691 then this is a very tiny table I'm going after potassium 
uh, which is negative 340. You can trust my word for it. And clo uh, since we went after brom bromine, it is negative 328. And this is negative 340. So let's just apply it. So KBr solid dissolved in water to give you K aqueous plus bromide negative aqueous delta H solution is challenged. Let's break the solid into gaseous ions away from each other, free from each other. Gas plus bromide gas. Delta H uh, lattice enthalpy is known. We just looked at it, 691. Let's dissolve these ions in enough water to have delta H hydration. So hydration of potassium, which is negative 340, plus delta H hydration of bromide, which was negative 328. So we can calculate delta H solution of this ionic salt, potassium bromide, is simply equal to some of the red arrows, which is 691, plus negative 340, plus negative 328. And when you do this, you will get approximately 23 kilojoules per mole.